Okay. Good evening and welcome to this uh, Council Committee of the Whole Meeting. My name is William Lutz, President of Council. Uh, this evening we are here to discuss an amendment to the application of the Troy City Council's downtown designated outdoor, outdoor refreshment area. And I believe Salome will be doing the presentation this evening. So, Salome, the floor is yours. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. I am here to discuss the amendments proposed uh, in the application. Um, I will start with a brief history. City Council passed Ordinance 11 on March 15, 2021. The referendum was held on November 2, 2021, and the voters supported establishing DORA in City of Troy. Uh, DORA became effective on November 26 at uh, 2021 and grand illumination event and at the right corner you can see the, see the photo of the event. Uh, current rules. So DORA is in effect from Thursday to Saturday from noon to 10 p.m. Uh, DORA beverages must be served in 16 ounce specially marked cups supplied by Troy Main Street. Um, permanent DORA area is 20 Point twenty four acres. And the next slide shows the proposed amendments, which includes amending uh, DORA days and hours. Proposed days and uh, hours are Sunday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Um, DORA beverages um, can be served in 20 ounce non glass containers supplied by liquor establishments with city sanctioned sticker. And at the bottom of the slide, you can see how the sticker would look like. Um, proposed permanent um, addition to the door area is 11.54 acres, and the total permanent boundary would be 31.8 acres. Uh, the application also proposes adding 161.64 acres as temporary boundary, which means that those areas could be activated upon request of the event organizer and approved by City Council. Also, an important change in the application is that the City Council could amend conditions with this ordinance process. Next three slides will show door boundaries. This map shows current door boundaries marked in orange uh, which is 20.24 acres. The next slide shows current boundary with proposed permanent addition marked in yellow. As I already mentioned, permanent addition will be 11.56 acres. And um, I'm just pointing out the yellow is very hard to see for us. So I think the new areas are here, there, here, and out West Main Street. Out West Main Street. And by the courthouse. And uh, by the courthouse. Yes. So if approved, permanent door area would be 31.8 acres. And, sorry, this is even <laughs> difficult to see on this map, but this map shows current door boundary with plus permanent proposed door area and uh, tem temporary areas, if approved. And those are marked in blue. And just to make it easier, um, those are um, areas are Treasure Island, Community Park, uh, Hobart Arena, um, and also part part of the um, eastern eastern side of the downtown Troy to the uh, grain elevator. So you could see. I don't. I think that's a Mulberry Street. Street. Yeah, that's Mulberry. Yes. Yes. So from Mulberry Street to the grain elevator. Uh, apparently, the uh, PowerPoint the projector, I don't know why, we'll have to look into this, is not showing on the camera. So, just for the record, this will be on our website tomorrow morning. So, anybody who wants to follow up with it, 
they can they will be able to see it on the website. Those are just um, reminders for additional DOA rules. Liquor establishment must not allow DOA containers uh, from other bars or restaurants into their establishments. They also should be enforcing responsibilities they have as a liquor permit holders, which is checking IDs and not over-serving their customers. Also, customers who purchase DOA beverages should remember that they cannot leave their boundaries with a their beverage, holding their beverage. Mm -hmm. Also, they cannot bring their own containers and refill alcohol beverages. And also, uh, it is important to remember that the door beverages can be only consumed in door containers, which will be marked with a sticker established, uh, adopted by the city. And this slide discuss sanitation and signage plan. Uh, if proposed permanent boundaries are adopted, uh, six additional trash receptacles will be placed and also, of course, the signage to mark the boundaries. Uh, temporary boundary extensions. If those areas are activated, the event organizer will be responsible to place uh, trash receptacles and also door signage. And student park department staff will continue monitoring door area and emptying full trash receptacles as needed, in addition to the regular, regular pickup schedule. And also on the right, you can see the, how the door signing will look like. Those will be similar to the ones we already have at the boundary, but of course the hours, days will be changed on it if the application is approved. And also we will uh, have a QR code, which will take uh, people to the website where they can see uh, door rules in details and read and also see the map. Uh, we have received um, support letters from Troy Main Street and Troy Area Chamber of Commerce. This slide shows <laughs> letter um, submitted by Troy Main Street. It was included in your packet as well. Troy Main Street is supporting their amendments and we have also included two photos from the first five events, just uh, some customers enjoying <laughs> beverages in downtown Troy. And next slide shows letter received from Troy Area Chamber of Commerce and the photo from Strawberry Festival on the left. They also support the DOA amendments and uh, they have mentioned that it will be beneficial for Strawberry Festival as well if they decide they want to serve their beverages at the event or expand the boundary at the lobby. And this slide shows few comments received from downtown businesses. I will not read them, but all of them are su in support of DOA. Those comments were submitted um, in the monthly surveys Tro Troy downtown businesses have been submitting to Troy Street and the city. As, as of January 6th, we have received a few um, proposed amendments feedback on proposed amendments. Uh, one is uh, about uh, West Franklin Street, eliminating sidewalk on south of West Franklin Street, which, uh, which is along the parking lot by City Hall and only including the sidewalk north of uh, the City Hall. So that would be from West Franklin Street to Cherry Street, but only the north side of the sidewalk. Also, Miami County Commissioners uh, asked to not include their parking lot as a permanent DOA area, but to mark it as in blue as a temporary addition to the DOA area. Um, and also, uh, if the liquor establishment listed on the application have to be re renewed to include the other establishment, the other establishment that may be in the area. Uh, no other. We did get, uh, I, hopefully everybody saw the email today, Connor Heron, owner of uh, yeah. Heron's. Uh, so that's the additional feedback that we got. That's the only feedback and response to it. One other question on the, uh, let's, we'll wait, we'll wait we'll wait have, let's, let's have okay, Solomon fine. finish the presentation, then we'll get the questions. Let's follow him as well. <coughs> 
So moving forward, City Council must approve or disapprove the application by February 26, 2023. Uh, if, uh, if it is decided to application, adopt, application be adopted as is, then we can move forward with the process. But if the council desires to have additional amendments or changes in the application, the, the ordinance should be indefinitely postponed at, at January 17th meeting, and then city director would uh, submit a new application to the city council with changes as part of the new ordinance. And then the city council would consider that a new application on February 6th, that application will be submitted on February 6th meeting for the council to, to consider. So I just want to make sure everybody knows that process because it's a little different than how we do regular committee versus council ordinances or resolutions. The state requires that we submit a, an application. I submit an application, an application to the clerk of, of uh, council, and so that's what the council has to act on. So we can't amend it now and then just put a new application to the meeting. There has to be that additional step where at next meeting, if you want to change the boundaries or you know recognize the feedback that we mentioned in the previous slide, it would be an indefinite postponement. And then uh, per the law director, I could submit a new application for immediate consideration at the next council meeting. OK. Uh, Salmi, are you finished? Yes. yes. All right, thank you. Do any council members have any comments or questions on the presentation? No, Mr. Schilling. I just want to follow up with Patrick's comments. So, okay, Mr. Siever? Basically, well, if, if we want to be good neighbors and accommodate the Methodist Church request and the county commissioner's request, our position for today will be to turn this one down and then ask that it be redrawn to accommodate those two uh, areas and, or then, and, or other. and or other things. But but if we wanted to change those, that's what we would need to do. Right, and, and so you would indefinitely postpone at the next meeting. Um, we would update the map to accommodate those changes. And then if there's anything else that wants to be uh, changed, then we would reflect that in the in the application, and then move forward at the next council meeting. And what would happen if we chose to just say we like it as sufficient? We would just ask the county commissioners up so with us and the, our neighbors to the. What would happen if we didn't move to change it? If we just kept it as sufficient? But I, I mean, ideally, it would be staff's position that we that these are reasonable requests. Uh, it, it is, and and we, you know, it's it's a matter of, um, I guess, three weeks because there's a fifth fifth Monday in January, but it's a relatively short time, and it is January February, so uh, participation in Dora is probably going to be lower than it would be during the summer. So um, there's there's not that kind of urgency. Mr. Schilling. Okay, I, uh, the only thing I see when I talk to Mr. Kittering about this, what the church asked for was not to have Dora in front of first place on West Franklin Street. So if you want to extend the border to the corner of the city building, they're okay with that. You put the trash can in front of the door by the city building, they're on West Franklin. So they don't want to there would probably be no benefit to doing that since we, okay. have, we have red plaques on the, we don't really want door drinks in yeah. the building. Um, and so there'd really not be any reason for us to allow them down the sidewalk in front okay. of uh, that's, that's fine. It's just just want to clarify cleaner. that. Yeah. Okay. It would be cleaner to be able to move the trash can at the corner rather than in the middle of the mid block. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other? On there now, right? Mrs. Snee. If I could, I mean, I understand the request. Is it basically to do with the moving of the signage about Dora from the south 
basically. Corner to the north corner of that it, intersection. So that doesn't so change do the boundaries, some, though. It does. Uh, it, does it does because the the, uh, the door would not be the entire street right of way. It would be just the north sidewalk where they, they would be able to walk. See, the DORA is technically a right of way ordinance, um, and the properties that are within the DORA are surrounded by that right of way always have the option to either have a green welcome door drinks or red no door drinks sign uh, prohibiting or allowing on their property. So all this would do is push the boundary to the north so you know somebody couldn't, they're not supposed to anyway, but couldn't walk down the middle of, Cherry, of uh, Franklin Street <laughs> with, with a door drink. They'd have to walk in front of the parking lot and they'd have to be, the gym. Well, they, they'd have to be walking on the north sidewalk if we made the, the change here. Yeah, and again, the reason they talk about that is that we have several meetings a week there. We have a recovery service. And in talking to our, our minister and the other people involved in the recovery programs, they feel that it would be beneficial for those that are in the recovery programs not to have that exposure. It might be a greater debate if uh, you know what if that was like the only relatively minor change, but we do also have uh, uh, color change requests from the county commission. Uh, go from yellow at the parking lot to blue so that the uh, parking lot's only activated with their permission and your specific approval uh, with notwithstanding legislation. Mr. Phillips. Uh, my two questions. On the West Main Street on the address range, we have uh, 220 and a half crossed out. So uh, we're adjusting that from number two West Main all the way down to 522 West Main? Yes, to Adams Street to okay. include those additional businesses uh, who so will be it in it the permanent extension. The it does, yes. Gotcha. Second of all, um, even if we excluded the county or, or uh, you know, boundary around the county property there, uh, is that in, would that include the parking lots? Uh, behind Basil's and Subhouse that they own. Those are already in. Those are already yeah, in. Those are and there's no objection in. from... Right. I mean, that, I mean that, that was part of the original uh, yeah. map. Okay. Uh, uh, they're, they're also, they still will require some signage uh, around the county quad, if you will, uh, that it would not be poured, you know, the, the complex around the, the, the county building. The, co the complex? The complex sure. that, uh, that is going to exclude them. And, that, and there's already existing signs. Right. Yeah. So, so that would stay. On the, uh, the boundary along the uh, riverbed, um, yeah, I know we've had some discussion about taking, you know, Having the dam taken out, not us, the city doing it, but somebody, somebody doing it, and then building, of course, a brand new dam up by Treasure Island, and then uh, that would drop the riverbed low enough to uh, put in a walkway. We haven't gotten any funding or approval on that, right? I'm not sure where you're going with this, but it's, but. Um, well, I mean, the question is, is that I, I this is our last, with, uh, this is not our last go around with door. I mean, we're going to still continue to look at this and and look at amendments into the future and that type of thing, correct? We, we may. Uh, uh, it depends on what kind of development, particularly on the east side, is, is spurred later on. Okay. Uh, and so we, have that, we have that opportunity any year that we want it, to. It looked like a little reach that we're giving the, the fish an opportunity to participate in DORA. <laughs> and uh, so I'm, I'm just wondering, I mean, we could always come back and include if, in fact, all that funding and work has been done, then we can go and include that, that walkway, river walk, or whatever you want to call it, in, in the future DORA. I don't know what, <laughs> I, I, I'm not aware of any plans to have some kind of a walkway, yeah. walkway across the river. No, on the side of the river, by the you mean south, the, south, the, south, 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 south river. The, the recreational trail. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would be a, a conversation really for later. Because but we I'm have it sure in, in there right now. As an activation only. So that would only be well, well, my question, temporary. My question is, we don't even have it yet. So why are we activating it? It's the current. 
Pardon? Right? Yeah, that's the current the, levy. No, right. right, that's just the that's levy the that, levy. that we've got. And so here's the. So other if, if I want to, I can take a drink on that cement part of the levee and sit there and watch the fish go by. Um, no, on no. Very, 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 as long as maybe. you got, yeah, as long as you approve that as a temporary activation. Yes. Does the waterway included in that? No, no that's a no, that's a. But this is this, this really it's really designed for that that walkway that we're future. we think somebody's thinking about building. In the future, the the rec trail extension, yes. no. it it could, yes. But again, it's blue, so you could activate that. Now, once you activate it, you may decide, you know, we want to activate that permanently. And the and the reason that the 160 acres was included is between when we uh, passed the when you passed the door the first time and now there were significant changes to the state law. They added acreage. They added a number. Uh, you know, we were restricted to having one relatively small Dora for a city our size. Now we could have uh, three. Is it three? Yes. Um, of 350 acres each. Um, we're, we're, for the record, we're only asking for an expansion of one. That's it. Um, so there's been a, there have been a lot of a lot of changes to this. One of them, though, that really didn't change. So so another thing that that we uh, highlighted that Sal and I mentioned earlier is um, council would have the ability under this application and, and an, uh, an ordinance uh, in the future to uh, legislate changes to hours and days if they want to adjust that permanently without going through this entire formal process again. There is a carve out though still in the uh, uh, the new ORC uh, uh, legislation that still requires the full process if boundary changes are enacted. That's why when in talking to the law director um, the the discussion was and we we kind of took this plagiarized this from uh, at least one other community that's doing something similar was to make it as, as large as you know reasonable, put it in blue, that way it's it's dormant unless there's a specific reason that council wants to activate that. That's why that was all in there. It wasn't specifically focused on the rec trail, but that's certainly uh, one reason why we would want to include it in the blue at this point. And your question, Jeff, is why are we doing it if there's no development so far? Exactly. So we can always come back and do it at another time. I, I do have a you, question. Oh. You could, but um, it's not just about the wreck trail. It's you know there there is some levy down there, as limited as it is, as limited as it is, and we don't know when and how quickly any of the low dam development project is going to be, the southeast area, you know, how fast that might develop. Uh, and so, again, you know, if we just include it in the blue, it may never get activated, but at least it's there, it's under this process. And in the future, if we do want to make some changes, they're uh, much, much easier to make. But you could activate it like yeah. under the go with tent or the Mumford. I mean, there's reasons for it. Well, I, I, I have some. Real, there's not a bench. A, a you can't real walk bench. I don't walk. Okay. I, I do have. It's pretty it's a, I have some questions. Okay. It's a flat cement sloping into the river. For the most part, we're adding the rest. Yeah. Yeah, all on. Okay. Oh, that's what we're looking at. I mean, on. Okay. Well, yeah, maybe you can get your own real treasure island. On the activation zone, is it going to be treated as an all-or-nothing proposition a project, project sponsor or project or an event sponsor? No, no, no. Okay. It, it, no. no. The, the <coughs> council does not have to activate all 160 acres at once. Okay. Uh, no. And so, would we treat the act activation zones kind of in a similar process? We do notwithstanding ordinances now. It would be part of the notwithstanding ordinance. If we have notwithstanding ordinances now that seem to work, why are we creating an activation zone which seems to create some degree of confusion? 
because what this would allow is people, is people to uh, the notwithstanding requires the uh, event sponsor uh, or coordinator to uh, basically create their own liquor establishment. That's how they do that. Um, so it's it's much much different, much more involved than if council were to activate a certain section on behalf of the Strawberry Festival and then somebody is just going in uh, to one of the uh, restaurants and then walking out with their door a drink. So the, the project sponsor then wouldn't be responsible for getting the temporary liquor license nor the insurance that goes along with that. Correct. If the activation zone, if a project sponsor wanted to activate a certain part of the zone, does that certain part of the zone have to be continuous, contiguous with the existing zone as it exists now? Yes. So if somebody wanted to do a car show at the park, we would have to create the activation zone in such a way to ensure that it is currently abutting up against the orange Correct. and the, they, they the yellow. And it would be the responsibility of the project sponsor to put out extra trash cans and signage for the duration of the event. Yes. Okay. And, and we would monitor that. We, you know, on, on, on something like that, that's probably going to be a pretty big event that we're already would be involved with. Uh, and so we'd be walking them through the process. We'd be coordinating. We'd be making sure that they have the right signage, helping them along the way. Okay. Mrs. Snead, did you have a question? I believe my question was answered with that. Okay. Thank you. Do council members have any, uh, Mr. Rizzo? Since we are, we are including certain park areas, has this been brought up to the park board commissioners and what's their view? We had talked to them uh, previously. We also talked to the, yes, um, and we also talked to the uh, uh, Board of Rec Recreation okay. Board, yes. And, and their yes, feedback and they, they were, they, it was positive. They were okay. very, very positive. Cool. Mr. Schoen. When we talked about the United Methodist Church, uh, I think you stated that uh, the application as it exists right now had excluded, or we would forgotten to add some liquor establishments. I've got to use some an email or a text on it. Well, and that's that was the first uh, the first uh, item on item that on that uh, feedback slide. Uh, where there are a couple of uh, liquor establishments. Now that's a purely administrative. Uh, item uh, that's not required as part of the application. So had that been the only change, you wouldn't have to amend or, or reject the application for those reasons. The two that le left off were Donato's and Dunaway's, maybe one other, but those two were not on that list. But that was just a list that we were going to supply to the uh, uh, to liquor control so that they knew who to notify. They do their own independent research because they've got everybody in their database so if we would have missed somebody they would catch them anyway and that would not uh, make the application defective okay i, I thought our, on our discussion that what that had made the application defective and we had to start over again at the time you and i spoke i that believe that was my understanding okay thank you when we're done with land and everything i just have a couple questions for either Salome or andrea on the when, when what? Current, when we're, whenever you're, we're done, talk about the land issues. Okay. What I do want to do now is open it up to public comments. I know I have a lot of folks here that, that want to speak on this. So if you wish to speak on this uh, proposed amendments, you're welcome to do so. Please come to the podium and address and take as much time as you wish to consume. Hello, my name is Andrea Keller, uh, 405 Southwest Public Square and I'm the executive director of Troy Main Street. Um, Troy Main Street has worked with the city staff over the last year to um, collect surveys from our downtown businesses. Those have been sent out monthly and that um, all of that information has been compiled and, and provided at different city council meetings. So I just wanted to reiterate that that is how we came up with the recommendations when we, when we worked with the city. Um, it was all based on feedback from businesses. And then we also, as Trey Main Street, met individually with all of the liquor license establishments um, because obviously they um, see this more, more um, 
more than our retailers do, and so they have, you know, more insight into what things could be done better. And so I just wanted to let, let everyone know that we did meet with all of them one-on-one, -on -one, and all of that information was taken into consideration in coming up with the recommendations as well. Um, and then I had um, three business owners reach out to me today that were not able to be here tonight, but wanted me to express that they're in support of the proposed changes and those were Connor Heron from Heron's Market, which I think he ended up sending an email as well, um, Steve Smith from the Caroline, and Allison Fullenkamp from Summers Remy. So that's all I have, unless you have a question. So there are any questions? Thank you, Andrea. Do you have questions for us? Yeah, I, well, I don't really want these to answer these. Under our, do have, under our door, our rules are written and reminders are written and reminders. Um, my understanding is the door cup is purchased to go. I mean, you walk it, you're not sitting there drinking inside the establishment with the door cup. Um, I believe you, technically you're legally allowed to drink it in the establishment, but we do have, I know of at least one establishment that they have established that rule for their business because they just hear for them to manage. Um, but my understanding is that legally you're allowed to have it in a door cup in the restaurant. You just can't bring so it. So that restaurant would be selling. Once you consume that drink and you're still sitting there drinking it, they would sell you another door cup if you want another drink? Because that's how it's supposed to function, correct? Right, yeah. Well, if they're, I mean, it, if, if, you go, if you go to a bar, they don't. Well, it's stickers. Well, it's stickers they now. Refill, well, they don't refill your, your drink. I think the health health. I, I, I understand that, but who's monitoring that? Treat it the same way. So who's yeah. monitoring that? Okay. You mean... You mean if you the bar, have the, the bar is going to monitor it. You mean if like you're people that? ordering or something? I, I'm saying I don't I, even at the establishment. I don't see a sense that you would use the door cups inside. Right. It would be somebody that says, "Yeah, I'd like to. Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to buy a door drink." And I can see you wait until your date or your whoever you're with finishes their meal because you got done early. Right. But then you're out the out the door out the out the door. Yeah. You're not saying, hey, I want my drink. Oh, by the way, put in the door cup because I might be leaving in an hour. Yeah. Well, the other thing is you could, I mean, I don't know that legally we can tell the businesses that they have to make people leave with the door a drink because I don't think that's how the... Right. It, it, it would have to be policed by the establishment. Mm-hmm. But, but to it's your point... Okay. Yeah. The other thing they can do is if somebody wants to drink, they can have it in a door cup when they leave. Uh, that's not technically what the rules say either, is it? No. Why would that, I thought that was the point of it. They don't care. They're in the, they're yeah. in the bar. So yeah. if they're leaving, the only thing we care about is that leaving. they leave and then they, they have to come, try to come back. That's right. Yeah. Once okay. they leave, they're in the public right of way. And out the door. They're out the door. Across the threshold. All right. Any other questions Thank for you. for Andrea? Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Andrea. Hey, you missed kickoff and we relax. Anyone else? Kelly Snyder, nine three five Atlantic Street. I just have a question about the temporary um, lines over towards Treasure Island um, on the. Um, map that I saw, and it didn't look like it was as clear on that map that I could see. Um, it looks like people can walk up Elm Street. Is that correct? Just on the east side, so that there is a connect, so that there is a connection between Treasure Island. So it, it's con so it remains contiguous. Yes. But well, couldn't they just walk on both sides of Elm Street? Couldn't they just walk right? on the bike path? Um, they could. They probably could. Um, but that, that, that might not always happen because they might be coming from Dunaways or Donatos and they're, they're down West Main Street. Are the Eagles they included? Can, yeah, I don't think the Eagles is included. Uh, in the Eagles, yeah, well, I mean, they're surrounded. They, they yeah, are by the I mean, They're within they? the area. They're just a private club, so, you know, they can regulate themselves. But if you if you look up Elm Street, you see that thin blue line. Well, that's what I'm saying. That would take care of Elm Street for them because yes. they're in front of them. Correct. <coughs> but only if it's only if it's activated. 
Only if it's active. Right, only if it's active. Yeah, I understand but, that. But does that only mean that they have to yeah. activate that part of it? They could activate. We'll have to look into the, uh, the rec trail a little more. A little more. We, have to, we have to update our rec trail rules based on the new uh, OR. Well, it, it does. It, it does lead to to a to a different question. If um, I, I mean, I, I'm going to assume the Eagles have some type of liquor permit for an activated event. Would they also be a um, Dora vendor? They could. Okay. Uh, they could do that. And uh, actually, Troy Main Street was a Dora vendor um, during the um, Tour de Delma. Okay. I guess because they're they're not like they don't have the hash marks at the Eagles, but I was just concerned that that's a a long of residential space there on the west side. Uh, yeah. on the west side. Well, on the west side, but I mean it's still. And, you know. and that's why that thin blue line is there. It's only on the east side. Yeah. Similar to you know to make the change for the first mess this. It's, same okay. Idea. Okay. And again, that blue. So, so that's only part of the discussion with any notwithstanding and any request that we've made. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Karen Boone for West Main Street. Um, this doesn't really affect my business, pop up at 4 West Main one way or the other. We have a lot of people in and out doing different things, but the door doesn't affect the majority of them. I'm just curious, um, the decision to go seven days, what do other um, cities in Ohio that have the door, what are their hours, like why do we go to the seven days versus just the weekend? I'm just out of curiosity, and do we know what other cities do? Sure, cities um, do? sure. Um, so there is no uniform um, formula. Um, but there are plenty of cities, and plenty is a relative term, uh, that do seven days. Um, there are some that do uh, expanded hours beyond our, uh, what we're proposing as well. Um, when we discussed with Troy Main Street and with uh, the Chamber and with uh, uh, other just feedback that, that uh, we all got from businesses, um, one of the m most frequent um, Concerns or that they were hearing questions that they were asked from um, uh, customers was, you know, what what are the rules? When can I do it? When can I do it? If we had to educate people, it was those that might be out walking around on a Monday night or a Tuesday night, and it's like, no, you you're not on Thursday. Nobody reads so the signs. <laughs> this made it just more uniform, and since right. we had so few <laughs> issues uh, this first year. Uh, we were not concerned, uh, and, the, and I will also say, since you you, uh, you brought this question up, that uh, the police chief could not be here, but I did have a conversation. We did have a conversation with the police chief. He did not have any concerns at all about going seven days. He felt like the uh, uh, lack, uh, lessening the confusion was was important to do. Okay, I appreciate you sharing that because based on the results from the survey that were in the packet. You wouldn't see that, like it says only two people voted for seven days a week, X amount of people. So I just appreciate you sharing that. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Jeff, did you have a question real quick? Yeah, just to follow up on that Sunday deal, and, uh, very quick. How many businesses are open? We've got a couple of restaurants downtown, and everybody else is locked out like a... Um, we have a few, uh, a few uh, restaurants that are open. Yeah, they were yeah, concerned come, about it. Some are open till noon. Or we've they got a several uh, retail establishments that are now opening, uh, that are now open on Sunday, and it's trending more that way. I, it's not a lot. It's only a handful, uh, but more, more now. And, and Andrea is still here, but um, more now than we did a year ago or a year and a half, whenever. We first looked at this issue. I don't know. I didn't think there was anybody. I mean, other than Subhouse and maybe Mojo's, I'm not sure. And Caroline's open for brunch. Uh, Agave and Ron. Agave and Ron's open as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Go ahead. Come on up. Hi, I'm Steve Henderson of 975 Dickerson. Uh, I'm going to throw a wet blanket on this. I'm going to give you the, another view of what I think of this. 
looks to me like the objective is figure out a way to lengthen the amount of, of miles people can walk with a drink in their hand. Now, I understand if I were a business person some downtown, I would want more people walking around, maybe with a buzz on so they buy something from me. So I understand that completely. One of the, there's a couple other things. If I was a resident downtown and I had a, a six-pack of beer in the refrigerator, I couldn't walk around with that can of beer downtown because I don't have a Dora thing. So I have to go to a bar, even though I live, I live right next to it. I've got to get a Dora thing so I can drink somebody's more expensive beer, and I'll leave my ex inexpensive six-pack in the refrigerator. Doesn't make any sense to me. Some of the survey results that we saw in the addendum aren't really, really don't provide compelling arguments for this. Well, let's see. I'm going to on the Dora days, only six of 22 respondents wanted seven, seven by seven. The other 22 were all over the place in terms of how many days they wanted it. So if you're looking for a compelling reason for this, the survey doesn't support it. Okay? The door hours that are in the survey, they're not overwhelming either in terms of, oh, let's, let's go 11 to 11. I hope all the signs we have on our trash cans glow in the dark because at 11 o'clock, you're not going to read any of them, no matter what color they are. Well, let's be serious. How many people are going to be out there in the night versus noontime? So if you're trying to do something, let's try to do it right and have a little common sense. Twelve of the 17 businesses that were surveyed saw no reason to expand the area. So... I got to ask the question: What's are you, you going to follow the survey? Looks like we're trying to figure out. Oh, who's got the biggest door in Miami County? I mean, it seems like that's the objective. I'm not opposed to it necessarily, but but I don't see any any reason for it other than we'll have more people walking around with a drink in their hand. Quite frankly, I don't care, and I don't think you should either. I mean, the more people walking around with a drink in their hand only makes me as a driver downtown. It's like, oh, are they gonna <laughs> are they gonna look both ways at every intersection? I think the answer is when you got a buzz on, hell no. We can't let pe the what we're proposing is anybody that's got a door cup can't drive. <laughs> so if he can't drive, why do we expect them to be responsible for walking? Okay? So I'm, I'm nervous about this. I'm nervous about the, the, the precedent it stands. The blue part, I understand. I, I wish the yellow would turn blue so that there's some adult <laughs> adults looking at this, and I've got my fingers crossed, that you would take a look at when, when do we activate it? Can we do a little bit at a time? Having it a permanent really, really makes me really nervous. Uh, also, the idea of every, if you already got a door cup, you're out walking around with a drink, you can't go into a bar to get another one. So hopefully the bars will have a trash can outside so they can throw away the door cup and go in and get another drink. Um, I, I don't know. You know, I've been to New Orleans, you probably all have too, and it, there, there is a problem with people not being respectful. Now, I understand we're looking mostly at residents of Troy, so we can all be, all be looking, looking for responsible citizens doing the right thing. But when there's big events, Strawberry Festival, they're not all going to be from Troy, and they're going to have a little less concern about the, the mess they leave. Okay, so... That's kind of my comments. I, I think the, the number of different color signs, the blue, black, yellow, red, at 11 o'clock at night, they're all going to look the same to me. And uh, the idea that you can have a Dora cup and go into, into a, 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 
a dress store because they got a green door thing just blows my mind. So I understand it's the store's option to do that, but to be able to go into a dress store with a drink and not be able to go into a bar with a drink seems to be a disconnect to me. So anyway, that's my two cents, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Mr. Secretary. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, thank you, Steve. Um, thank you, Steve. Um, just to clarify, I mean, we couldn't get too detailed in the explanation on the survey, but um, the feedback that we got um, was that, and, and the way that the answers to the survey questions were reflected, um, that's, the, that, that's what their different priorities were. Let me see if I can explain it. Um, so it wasn't that they were opposed to 11 to 11 or seven days a week. No, but they were in favor of it either. That, well, I'd like to see it go Wednesday, or I'd, uh, I'd like to see it go on Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, they were not opposed to going seven days a week. That just wasn't uh, part of their response. Um, so it was, it was really, this is the minimum that I'd like to see more than, no, I don't want to see seven days a week and only six or whatever number you threw out and said that. Same thing with the hours uh, as well. Um, as far as the, um, the users, uh, or the uh, uh, participants in DORA, um, yes, we have a lot of local participation, but in, in the, uh, the bigger events that we've had, we've had quite a few out-of-towners. Um, and I, it's all anecdotal, but you know, I would not say it was weighed heavily uh, residents only. I, there were plenty of outsiders that have uh, engaged in our DORA and have provided just feedback to us saying that, you know, this is wonderful, it's great that we can do this. Mm -hmm. um, there's not been any kind of, you know, uh, drunk Part of the problems we have uh, with surveys is it depends on who you ask. If you go up and ask somebody with a DORA cup, what do you think of DORA? I'm going to guess they're going to be pretty positive. About well, that. it's not. It's not that we were asking. It's not that we went out around with a clipboard asking uh, the question. Mm -hmm. These were just random comments, and they were few and far between, but they were there. Right. Uh, with the survey, the survey was just pushed out to everybody who was on uh, Troy Main Street's uh, emailing list uh, of businesses downtown, uh, and then they chose whether or not to uh, to respond. That's why we didn't have 100 percent. Sure. much like every survey. Um, so just to clarify that, that uh, uh, we took everything and wanted to make it as least confusing as we could, standardize around a set of hours uh, with the knowledge that if, you know, at some point uh, something needs to be tweaked, the council can do that uh, easier than in the past because the, the whole application process uh, and procedure uh, drawn out would not have to be followed. So it would allow, you know, um, activation but also deactivation. What I'm concerned about is once in 11, seven days a week, you're going to be hard pressed to say, oh, never mind, we're only going to do it on the weekend. Because you're always going to find somebody somewhere, probably a business, that says, no, I want, I want these people wandering around every day. So I'm concerned about once you do it, yeah, I understand you can undo it, but that doesn't happen overnight. It's usually after something bad happens. So I don't, what I'm saying is I'd like to see, to be preventative rather than say, oh, we can react to any emergency. Well, no kid. And who's going to enforce this, by the way? If I walk past the trash can with a, with a door or bottle, Who's going to stop me? The police? Police. Yeah, that's, that's who does I would the hope that the police would have a lot more important things to do than do that. Well, uh, I, I'd remind the council that we've been doing this now for a year, so um, but we've been monitoring it pretty, pretty closely. Okay. Well, that's fine. I'll take my wet blanket. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anderson, for your patience. Anyone else wish to address council? Hi, Jules Harris, 170 Riverside Drive. I also uh, own Trojan Forest downtown. Um, and so as a person who did uh, answer the survey questions, um, I would 
agree with what Patrick said. Um, in my answers to those surveys, when they asked about extended hours, it, I, I don't know that my understanding of that was, uh, you know, it, that this was all of an availability. So I probably said some extended hours, but not like a Sunday to Saturday. Um, same with the map. Uh, now that we've got scratch pizza being in some different places, um, that type of thing, I, I totally see a reason why we would extend that to some of those other businesses. I'm also on the Strawberry Festival board, and um, we were very successful with the door in place and didn't have instances. I think um, Sunday, I agree, like Sunday, why would somebody want to necessarily be, would, there wouldn't be so many people out or businesses open, but so I don't see that that would be such a risk, but it would be an opportunity that when we do have a festival or we have something else going on, that it makes it an easier proposal to, or to have that in place. Uh, to benefit those things at that time. Um, I think that the Strawberry Festival showed that we could be really successful with a lot of people who were not from town. So um, that's just my, I just wanted to say that I agree with Patrick that in, in those surveys, while I was very positive in all those surveys, I probably was not one that said, hey, do it all the time. Uh, but I, I would not be opposed to that. That would also be something that I would support. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Bradley Vanger, 105 Festival Drive. Just a couple questions I have regarding this. Uh, we have gone from 20 ounce non glass containers, which are supplied by the city or, or Troy Main Street. Now we are expecting the liquor establishments to supply their own. Was that a cost driven issue, or what was the driven issue behind that? Uh, that was a simplicity issue behind that. Uh, that was a simplicity uh, also. Um, that was very much supported by the businesses. Okay. As a matter of fact, they preferred the stickers, um, uh, and it makes it a lot easier for two reasons. Number one, they don't have to maintain a separate inventory of specifically sanctioned... Door cups. Uh, okay. ...of one specific size, one specific type. Uh, several of our, uh, uh, at least a couple of our downtown uh, liquor establishments have unique containers that they use. Mm -hmm. And uh, this would allow them to use those containers, uh, non-glass, 20 ounces or less, and, um, and they have total flexibility and they are more than willing to work with whoever their printer vendor is. Uh, you, you would have seen um, there's a space for business logo at the bottom of the sticker mm -hmm. in case they want to personalize it, which helps us in our police department because if we see somebody wandering and not following the rules, we can also see which business they were at so that we can maybe track back a little further uh, to that business. So okay. And I just have a comment about the Sunday hours in particular. <coughs> Most of your businesses downtown on Sundays usually do not open until about noon, if not later, only because you got church. And unless you're a Catholic that wants to take your communion wine out to the street with you, I guess you, we wouldn't have too many businesses open at 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning. It's a, it's a door chalice. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Rizal. <laughs> you, you got my point. So could we theoretically reduce the hours just on Sunday to say maybe 12 or 1 to 11? Most businesses do open at 11. Most businesses do open at 11 o'clock, um, and the businesses, um, there were a couple of uh, restaurants that did specifically ask uh, about Sunday hours. Whether they're 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock, uh, the idea was trying to be consistent over all seven days. Um, and, and I don't, we did not chart what hours, um, I will say mass because I'm Catholic, but worship is. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, whether it's 7.30, 9.30, and 11.30, or 11 to 12, I, you know. Bill, you want to answer that one? Standard and simple. Bill, you want to answer that one? Yeah, based on the current uh, configuration of priests we have, we're done way before 12. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're like, what, one a month now? <laughs> no, 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 I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, second thing I have, second, second question, boundaries. 
are the door signs still going to say no alcohol past this point? Because that's very confusing to me. You know, I guess my question is, are we going to see a lot of big activations on the, some of these areas, some of these temporary areas? Um, like from, uh, um, like from, uh, um, I'm assuming that's Elm Street, right? Yeah, it's the one on the left. The one on the left, up to where? To Treasure Island, mm -hmm. to the uh, northwest. Um, it, it would cross. Uh, Is that at Ridge Avenue, though? No, 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 no
And when this whole thing was going to be voted on, I spoke with so many of, of my clients just to get a feel for where they have been as far as issues. Um, and I explained to them, you know, we're getting ready to vote on our DORA. Have you had any negativity about yours? You know, and most of them, almost without fail, were actually extending their footprints because they had had no, like, really glaring issues with their DORA. And, I, you know, we're grown-ups. And, and let's face it, people who are going to get plastered aren't going to spend 8 $9 on a beer downtown to get plastered. And they're going to, you know, people that, want, that are drinking to get drunk are going to stay home and, and drink the cheap stuff, I'm just saying. Um, so that's all I have. And I'm, I'm also on the, um, the Strawberry Festival Board. I'm the general chair for 2023. And I think it's an amazing thing, and people love it in the other areas that I've talked with. So that is all. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other final comments, questions, or concerns from council members? Seeing none, uh, what is the wish of the committee? I would move that as a committee that we uh, disapprove the current application, that the modifications requested be uh, resubmitted. Uh, and that we go forward with the modifications that probably need to be specified, correct? So that would be the uh, the county parking lot, or not the parking lots, the county uh, area uh, uh, on the complex, and that the area where uh, the Methodist Church, uh, I guess that would be that outside, outside of the on. Method first place, be excluded from the current boundaries. Uh, and let everything else go forward as uh, submitted. Second. I would second that motion. I think that's okay. a good idea. Is there any further discussion? Can I just clarify what you said about the the request from the county, as I'm reading it, was the North Cherry Street parking lot? It's, yeah, it's just east. It's the parking area uh, east of the safety building. Okay. So that's what that motion was indicating. Yeah, the, the yellow area. It's from the county <laughs> complex, so I'm making sure it's the Cherry Street Park. Cherry Street behind. No, the Cherry Street is is to the east of the safety building. Yes, it's behind the sign. Yeah, there. I could clarify the motion, Mr. Chair. The uh, I would clarify that the existing parking lot lots continue to remain. That the area for the county that's being included under the new map uh, that they've requested be excluded be excluded from the new map. Be changed the blue. Change the blue. I'm sorry. Be changed the blue. I second that. <laughs> Please, can we move on? <laughs> Is there any further discussion? <laughs> Is this something today, Mr. Smith? No. I <laughs> The beekeepers are more in. There you go. Okay. If, um, <laughs> there's no further discussion. I, I mean, we, we we don't really take roll call votes into council and committees as a whole, but it seems like everybody's kind of nodding their hair yes. So um, the recommendation will be to um, to to, to indefinitely postpone um, this. I guess it's an ordinance, and then um, in the report we will report these two substantive changes for amendment. All right. Anything else for the good of the committee?